So we just finished up a interview with Jonathan here on an air park in another episode. So we ran over here to his airport and there's a bit of an anomaly we're gonna talk about today. Have you heard of an S2021? All right, Jonathan, so as mentioned, uh, you do have a bit of a, an anomaly of an aircraft here where it's not an S-20 and it's not an S-21, it's an it's in between. Uh, I was fortunate to buy this plane from, from the guys that built it. They had just finished it and, uh, and had it needed to sell it, so I was able to pick it up from them. And this plane was, was built with an all metal, the all metal wing, which the S-20 prior to this one and after had a dual strut fabric wing. And that's, to my knowledge, that's the only way you can get the S-20 now. But there was a brief time in there that you could get the S-20 fabric fuselage with the 141 all metal wing, which is now the standard wing on the S-21. Now, have you had a chance to fly uh, either either one or both, or is this your only experience with the RANS? This is my only experience, and I, I have been very, very happy with it. It's a super fun plane to fly. It's, it's very responsive. It's, it's really light on the controls. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a ton of fun to fly. Yeah, I would imagine. And the only thing I, I see a little bit different is uh, then uh, either you or somebody installed some VGs on top of the wing. That was part of the builders. They, they had installed that. Uh, and it, it's, it has a very, very low stall speed. Uh, it's in the low 30s. All right, so we had talked earlier, yeah, you're, you're a fairly new pilot, about three or four years in. You did flight training actually here at this airport mm -hmm. in a typical aircraft, but then you decide, let's go tailwheel. <laughs> and this aircraft is actually your very first tailwheel experience. It is. Uh, Tell me about that. Yeah, I, you know, I went the typical route, started in a nose dragger. Uh, 152, Cherokee 180, you know, just the typical trainer planes. But deep down, all, all I had ever really wanted to fly was a tail dragger. So I was able to, to get into this plane and my training started over from scratch. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was a whole different, a whole different experience. Uh, but I'm so thankful that I went that route. It, it, it seemed, to, seemed to make me a little bit of a better pilot. Sure. Now, what was the training like uh, going from the tricycle gear to this? Like, what did you guys start off with? I assume just very simple taxiing, of course. Get taxiing, um, you know, that the, the little wheel being on the opposite end changes everything. It's, you know, I was terrified of a ground loop. You know, you hear that a lot. Um, so, you know, I've been really, I've always been very cautious of that. Uh, so just keeping those feet moving, uh, keeping the rudder active so that's that's really where i started was just rudder work um you know keeping just, just keeping keeping it center line sure now is this a full swivel is there a friction uh built into it or what kind of style yeah, of tail it wheel? has it has the like the semi-lock okay you know where it, it'll break at a certain point and then it's full swivel so you know spring-loaded tail wheel um really good design you know randy and did a really he done a great job with this plane so uh, tell me through, uh, obviously taking off is is fairly easy to, you, but what's your style do you take off straight from this stance or do you get up on the mains and then roll back or yeah yeah i'll i will you know roll forward get up on the mains get the tail wheel up and then and then rotate and then on the other end of the spectrum when you come in to land do you do three pointers or touch the tail first or you probably don't do wheel landings often. Uh, some wheel landings but typically just three point okay. uh, just come in low and slow you know, as slow as possible, and then just uh, just come in three point. That that seems to work better for me. Yeah. Now, doing uh, let's say crosswind landings compared to a tricycle, how was that in this learning crosswinds? It's it's different. You know, of course, everything with the tail was a little bit different, but um, you know, tipping that wing into the wind, and you know, of course, you do. You know, you do need to try to wheel land if possible because it just gives you more more tail authority, more rudder authority, uh, having a little bit more speed up. So, but, but yeah, everything, everything about it's just a little bit different. It's, it's a little bit more of a challenge, but the challenge is, is what makes it so much more interesting. Jonathan, so going back into, uh, the setup of this plane for a second, this is a 912 ULS 
powered. It is. Uh, but you've got a in-flight adjustable AirMaster. Talk to me about the operation of that and how you set up for landing and takeoff. Yeah, the, the AirMaster prop, it's an electronic variable pitch. So it has three presets. It has a, uh, a takeoff, a climb, and a cruise. So you get the full 5,500 RPMs for five minutes, I believe, on takeoff. Um, and then cruise or climb and then cruise, you know, just drops your RPMs about 200 to the setting. And that's without, without touching any throttle at all. Uh, so then you can, you can adjust your throttle for the, you know, for the cruise position that you want. But, but typically when I'm in the pattern, um, I will go from, from cruise to climb when I beam the numbers. Uh, and that just gives me a little bit extra power if need be. And then before, as I'm on base, I'll swap to takeoff. That way, if I do have to do a go around, I've got all the, all the available power that the, that the engine has. Sure, and what, are you, what kind of numbers are you seeing um, on departure? Like you just mentioned to me this thing holds a lot of fuel, but a you don't carry all of it. Yeah, a ton of fuel. I, if I filled it up, I could fly for eight hours. So, so got, my the, bladder's not near that big, so. You got 40 gallons? 40 gallons. But you only fly with maybe half I, of that? Or? I fly with about 20 gallons. Yeah. Dynon Avionics at Dynon.com, offering everything from state-of-the-art glass cockpit options to advanced control modules that power and control your entire aircraft. Gradia Aero Group at GradiaAero.com. Proudly representing these best-in-class brands for experimental general aviation. Sherwings, BD Aviation, and MW Fly. KFA, Kit Planes for Africa, engineered for adventure and build for the bush as their motto. Offering several stole kit aircraft options like the Expedition, Safari, Bush Baby, and Explorer. Find them online at kitplanesforafrica.co.za. Bravo Fox at bravo-fox.com. The U.S. distributor for Black Shape Aircraft providing sales, maintenance, spare parts, and repair services located at the Sheridan Airport in Indiana. Visit us online at experimentalaircraftchannel.com for all things DIY aviation. And consider supporting us on our Patreon page to help us bring you more original aviation content. Jonathan, going from a typical tricycle gear, which I think they have like six inch tires to the 27 inch big boys there. <laughs> I imagine your landing's got a bit softer. Talk to me about that. These, these big tires sure soak up a lot of mistakes. They, they, uh, they make just nearly every landing feel like butter. They really do. It, it soaks it, it, it'll soak it up and you know, sure does make everything a lot softer. Now, have you, have you played with the tire pressures at all to see if that makes a big difference? Of, I know you can run them down to like, I don't know, two or four pounds or something, but... I typically run five to six pounds. That seems to work pretty good. Uh, you know, that, that takes away some of that sidewall flex, uh, but still gives you a soft enough, land, a soft enough tire that it, you know, it really soaks up those, those bumpy landings. Okay, and you said for the most part, you've done grass, but you, you do a lot of pavement um, landings, paved runway landings. And these work just as well on that. They work great. I, you know, I've not seen the, you know, a, a ton of wear. This tire has held up really well for me. Uh, you know, it's I've, I've run this same this same setup now for the, you know, the the, the entire life that I've had the plane. So you know, I'm not seeing any excessive wear on the tires. They they do a really good job for for what I'm doing. And about how many hours do you have you have logged in this so far? 125. Okay. 150 maybe. Yeah, and what is uh, probably your, your longest cross country that you've done with it so far? Probably longest cross country is three four hours. Yeah, which is which is a lot. Which is know. more than the bladder can handle. More than the bladder can handle, and <laughs> you know at 105, 110 miles per hour, that's that still gets you gets you across the country pretty pretty far. All right, so that's just a, kind of a quick walk around here with Jonathan on his uh, very unique. Um, Rand's aircraft and Randy, I'm going to be reaching out to you to talk about when this happened in the timeline of, of production, but very cool. I think you should be pretty proud to have such an anomaly very of an aircraft. Very much so. Yeah, I'm pretty tickled. So uh, something else to, to bring up again before we get out of here, uh, look out on our channel for another video that Jonathan and I did. He's in the process right now of building a house, building a hangar, 
but he's also building a runway and an air park. Probably six to nine months? I would think so, yeah. We, sh we should start uh, moving some dirt on the runway within the next three to six months, and then after that, you know, we'll, we'll start cutting in roads and and we'll the real fun begins. the real fun starts that's right so i personally have boots on the ground here had a chance to do some panoramic views of it he's got a really beautiful place i think he's gonna have a lot of a lot of fun there and um, he's all about community which i'm all about community so i'm really excited for him in fact when i get my my plane done i plan to land at that runway when there's grass on it absolutely and come to one of your uh, events here yep. soon yep hope to be we hope to have you know some fly-ins and cookouts and you know that that's that's really the direction i'm headed well looking forward to it i'm excited about it thanks for watching this episode and a quick shout out to our patrons over on patreon and co-pilot status zach newsome mike babcock lynn gardner gary martin and michael smith